Alright, this is Mr. Craig, and this video here is to help you with reviewing and naming your polyatomics. The first thing, though, in being able to review your polyatomics is to know your polyatomics. If you don't know the 10 polyatomics for AP Chemistry, and we only need to know 10 of them, please make flashcards. Uh, you only need 10 flashcards. On one side, write the chemical formula out. Or the uh, yeah the, the formula for the polyatomic, so and also be sure to include the charge, and then on the opposite side write the name. This will really help you in learning uh, the polyatomic names. I know that some of you think that you can learn stuff by just reading it and saying it to yourself a couple times, but actually physically making the flashcards really does help. So go ahead and make the the flashcards if you don't have these polyatomic ions memorized. Once you have the polyatomic ions memorized, um, there are more polyatomics that have the oxygen either added or removed from the 10 base. Actually, it's not the 10. It's actually only from 7. We don't add or remove oxygen from acetate, hydroxide, or ammonium. So really, the rules that I'm about to go over right now only apply to seven of the polyatomic ions that you're required to memorize. So if you recognize that one of the oxygens has been removed from one, one of the seven polyatomics, the, those seven will end in A-T-E. If you notice that one of the oxygens has been removed, we now have an I-T-E ending. The charge stays the same. The charge will always remain the same when an oxygen has been removed or added. And I know that's really difficult to uh, grasp and believe at the moment, but once we go over formal charges, Lewis structures, and Vesper, it'll all make sense. But be patient right now, just have a little faith. All right, if two oxygens are removed from the seven polys that you're supposed to know, then we have not only ite at the end, but we also have the prefix hypo. So we have a hypoite, essentially. If an oxygen has been added to the seven polys, then we still have an A-T-E ending, but we have the prefix per in this case. All right, let's do some examples here. And I have this sheet online for you. Um, I highly recommend that you actually go in, copy and or print it off, or just write down the paper as I go along here. Also, since this is a video, you have a pause button. Use the pause feature when I ask you to name the compound and to identify the poly. Also, um, I have some examples where I've given the name and I want you to write the formula. Um, so go ahead and use that pause button quite a bit. The intention of this video is not to have these long pregnant pauses, but to help you learn. All right. So in the first example here, we have Al2 and then in parentheses SO4, close parentheses 3. What I would like for you to do is use the pause button and name the compound and then identify the polyatomic ion. All right, you've recognized hopefully that the SO4 is the polyatomic ion, sulfate, and it has a negative 2 charge. That's why we have 3 on the outside of the parentheses here. Because sulfate has a negative 2 charge, aluminum has a plus 3 charge, and we want to balance out the charges here. So we don't use Greek prefixes. Do not even think about using Greek prefixes on any of these ionic compounds. So the name of this compound is aluminum sulfate. Looking at the next example, I want you to name the compound and identify the poly. Hopefully you recognize that we actually have two polyatomic ions in this compound. We have ammonium that has a plus one charge, and we have hydroxide that has a minus one charge. We don't need to use any parentheses here because we only have one kind of polyatomic. You only use parentheses, like up here in the aluminum sulfate, when you need to show more than one polyatomic ion. Just because it has a subscript doesn't mean you put poly or parentheses around it. So the name of this compound is ammonium that has a plus one charge and hydroxide that has a minus one charge. All right, 
Name this compound, identify the poly. In this example here, we have a polyatomic that has more, or we have an extra oxygen attached to it. So uh, this is per iodate. Iodate, regular iodate is IO3 with a negative one charge. The per iodate means that we have one more oxygen. Um, since we have parentheses here, that must indicate that the metal has a plus two charge since the iodate, or the per iodate in this case, has a negative one charge. So the name of this is calcium per iodate. Okay. Name the compound, identify the poly. In this case here, we have PO3, which is our polyatomic here, and it has one less oxygen than the PO4 phosphate. Uh, PO3 phosphite has a negative three charge charge does not change just because an oxygen has been removed. That's why we have three potassiums. So the name of this compound is potassium phosphite. Okay, go ahead and name this compound and identify the poly. In this scenario here we have uh, our polyatomic has two less oxygens than the CRO4, also known as chromate. So the name of this polyatomic is hypochromite with an ITE ending. Uh, hypochromite has a negative two charge. That's why the sodium has a subscript two because it has a plus one charge. So this is called sodium hypochromite. Go ahead and name the compound and identify the poly. In this case here, we have ammonium, which is acting as a metal, has a plus one charge. That's why you notice that we have the parentheses with the two subscript. Uh, sulfur, in this case, has a negative two charge. However, we don't call this sulfur, but we call it sulfide. And you'll notice that the sulfide, the IDE ending, indicates that we have an element. There's only one polyatomic that has an IDE ending, and that's why you want to memorize it, and that is hydroxide. Typically, if it ends in IDE, you're looking at a single nonmetal element. So in this case, ammonium sulfide. Go ahead and name the compound and identify the poly. All right, recognizing that, yes, again, we have SO3, which is one less oxygen than SO4. Uh, the SO3 is sulfite, has a negative two charge. That's why we have two lithiums, lithium sulfite. Go ahead and name the compound and identify the poly. Hopefully you recognize that we have two polyatomic ions again. Uh, ammonium, the plus one charge, uh, acting as our metal. And again, that is our only polyatomic that has a positive charge that we care about. And then the C2H3O2, which is our acetate with a negative one charge. Uh, it's kind of ironic that there, we're looking at an ionic compound here that has no metals. Just because there's no metals, we, also, we don't want to just start throwing Greek prefixes around here and getting real creative with the naming. Recognizing that we have polyatomic ions is going to keep us out of a lot of trouble here because the name for this, ammonium acetate, is very, very simple. Uh, we don't need to make things hard on ourselves by trying to overthink the system here. So again, I, recognizing the polyatomics makes this very, very nice. All right, go ahead and name the compound and identify the poly. In this case here, we have CO, which has two less oxygens than carbonate, CO3. Uh, again, the charge remains the same, still has a negative two charge. Magnesium has a plus two charge. So in this case here, we have magnesium hypocarbonite. Again, the hypo means that we have two less oxygens, and the ITE ending also is the correct ending on that. Go ahead and name the compound, identify the poly. In this case here, the C2H3O2, which was familiar with an earlier example, 
acetate uh, has a negative one charge that's why we only have one potassium so potassium acetate all right now I'm giving you names and I want you to write the formulas not only write the formula but balance it correctly go ahead and do that all right you recognize that we have a polyatomic that ends in ATE that's one of our 10 chlorate ClO3 uh, chlorate has a negative one charge sodium Na has a plus one charge so the formula should be NaClO3 beryllium hypochromite go ahead and name the com I'm sorry write the formula for this and balance it again recognizing that we have hypoite means that we have two less oxygens than the regular poly and in this case here it's CrO2 with a negative 2 charge beryllium which is in group 2a has a plus 2 charge so we should have BeCrO2 go ahead and write the formula and balance Recognizing we have an ITE ending here means that we have one less oxygen than our nitrate ion. So NO3 is nitrate, NO2 with a negative one charge is nitrite. Iron, in this case, has a Roman numeral 3, which means that we have a plus 3 charge on each of our irons. So the formula for this should be Fe, open the parentheses, NO2, close the parentheses, 3. Uh, one thing I may have said earlier, I don't remember, is it's really neat because if whatever the charge is on your nonmetal is, often it is your subscript. So nitrite has a negative one charge. That's the subscript for the iron. Uh, the metal has a plus three charge in this case. That is often the subscript for our nonmetal. Neat little trick. However, do remember that we still want to be aware and cognizant that we have to have the smallest ratio here so say if I had a 2 here and a 6 here then I would have to reduce nickel Roman tumor nickel Roman numeral 2 hypophosphite go ahead and write the formula and balance hypophosphite again we have the hypo with the IT ending phosphate FO PO4 with a negative 3 charge. Hypophosphite is PO2 with a negative 3. Nickel plus 2. So in this formula, we should have Ni3, open the parentheses, PO2, close the parentheses, 2. Again, the reason why we have a 3 here is because the hypophosphite has a negative 3 charge. The reason why we have 2 here is because the nickel has a plus 2 charge. And in our last example here, we have 10,4 per sulfate. Go ahead and write the formula and balance it. Recognizing that we have per means that we have one more oxygen than our regular sulfate ending. So we should have SN, SO5, close the parentheses, 2. I hope this has helped you in reviewing your polyatomics. Again, if you need to make your flashcards, please make them. If you have any other questions, by all means, don't hesitate to ask.